Hello, beautiful people, and you are welcome to CBA TV, the voice of East Africa and beyond. My name is Balu Gwani Shekola Aziz, your regular host on that your lovely program, Talk to CBA. On this episode of the program, I have a special honor to introduce my guest to you. I'm talking about the general manager of Argesa Water Agency, the person of Mohamed Ali Darod. Welcome to the show. Okay, thank you, Belugun. I'm blessed to be on the show. I'm blessed to be talking to CBA. I'm blessed to be part of the Talk to CBA show. So I'm glad to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you. And my people, on today's episode, we'll be talking about the water reticulation system of Argesa. I think <laughs> you will know that I have the right person in place. Uh, the first question I would like to ask you, you know, as we all know, water is everything in life. The importance of water in human life cannot be overemphasized. I want you to briefly tell us what this agency is doing uh, to provide a portable, clean and drinkable water to the people of Argeza. Thank you, Belugun. You have almost said everything that's to be said about water. Water is life. Water is everything about this life. Correctly said. Rightly said, of course. Uh, Hargeza Water Agency basically is established with a mandate to supply water to the people of Hargeza. Currently, we are supplying water to parts of Hargeza, but also we are involved in major expansion projects where we want to increase the coverage of water supply to the citizens of Hargeza or to the people of Hargeza. So, of course, you, sh you know that the current water supply infrastructure, current water supply system, was established in early 1970s, 72, 73, by the Chinese government. At the time, Hargeza was much smaller than what it is today. Uh, the current water supply was established or was basically constructed for people of 180,000 maximum. But today, you know that Hargeza has expanded over the last three decades since you know, the establishment of the Somaliland nation and we have a population of over 1 million of course so you should see the mismatch there water intended for or uh, for 180,000 now we have a people of around of over 1 million uh, inhabitants of the of the city of Ergesa and on that basis we are doing now or we are involved in uh, expansion projects with the support of our international partners and the support of our the European Union the German government, Somaliland Development Fund, Coca-Cola Africa Foundation, those are our development partners who are currently supporting Hergis Water Agents in its attempts to increase the water supply so we can supply more potable water to much uh, bigger you know, percentage of the current uh, people of Hergis. Thank you very much. You, you actually you know, said a lot. Uh, but you know, with regards to what you said the, the agency is doing, we all know that accessibility of this water is very, very important. And it's like providing water for the citizen is the major key project that governments can do for people. Can you please tell us what the Somaliland government is doing in regard of this water articulation uh, to bring clean water to the citizen of, of, of this country? You know, the government, uh, Somalian government, and in particular, you know, it is agents, Hargis water agents, uh, at the end of the day, uh, has the mandate to supply water to the people of Hargeza. What the government currently is doing is that we are working very closely with our partners in making sure that the projects, which I have uh, mentioned, are implemented in the right way. We are supporting the partners. And uh, at the moment, of course, you know, uh, the projects we are running at the moment are divided into two. Uh, the first projects are those projects which start from all the way from the wellville, from the boreholes, to the where you call the Chinese reservoir. You know, so water starts from the borehole, then they come to the Chinese reservoir, and that's where distribution is expected to start from. So at the moment we have um, those two projects. One is about increasing the water supply, and one is about distribution of the water that we bring to the city of Gaza. As for the increasing of the water supply, of course, we have the support of the European Union, we have the support of Somaliland Development Fund, where we are already involved in excavating more boreholes, in constructing more boreholes, so we can supply even more water, where we have uh, successfully completed the construction of 23 kilometer long uh, transmission main pipe, that's to supply water to Argesa. Now it's 
complete. We have completed the first phase of the pump station that's to supply water for, uh, to the city of Ragesa. And what's uh, remaining there is just, you know, the second phase of the pump station, which is, you know, the electromechanical part. But the borehole is uh, complete, the first phase, of course. Uh, the transmission main, or the main pipeline that brings water from the well field to the city of Ergeza is also complete. As for the distribution within the city of Ergeza, which is also another uh, you know, important part of the system, is under construction. In, in this regard, we have the support of the German government, basically, through this uh, bank, KFW, the German Development Bank, where we are implementing, alongside KFW, a major distribution project where we are going to lay a pipeline of around of, of a 163 kilometer within the city of Ergeza, where we are going to uh, construct four reservoirs in the four major districts of Ergeza, Tonsistun, Grand Kotpur, Hamoud Haibe, Ahmed Dagha, and Gaalimah, the five, I, I'll say, the five major districts of Ergeza, of course. They are under construction as we speak. Of, uh, of the 163 kilometers where we expect to do, 60 kilometers is already complete, uh, laid into the ground. The four reservoirs are under construction now, as we speak. And uh, with the completion of this system, we'll be in a position where we supply water to the people of Ergesa in a manner that's more equitable, that's more fairer, because now one limitation we have with the existing system that was built by the Chinese in the early 70s is that this system was designed for a city of uh, for a city much smaller than what Ergesa is today. It was designed for a city of 180,000, as I said earlier. And at the time, it was not foreseen that Ragesa will expand into the major city that it is today. So that gives us a very big, you know, a limitation, which is that we can't supply the water we are bringing to Ergesa today, as we speak, to the people of Ergesa in a manner that's equitable, because it was designed for the old city of Ergesa, and of course, the people who are getting water now are the old city of Ergesa. But all these areas that expanded later on are not getting any water from the current system. But with the new system, when it's complete, we will be in a position where we say we are supplying water to the people of Ergesa in a more equitable manner, of course. Uh, this, we, this is, you know, the beauty of the new system, of course, absolutely, yeah. Hmm. That is a very good development. And uh, I'm sure by the time that project is completed, the, the old people of Ergesa will get water, just like you said. Uh, now, uh, I would like to go into like the very recent event that this agency you know, uh, uh, put together. But before I go there, uh, I would like us to take a look at the report of that event so that uh, people will understand what we want to talk about. We will be right back. Contaminated water and a lack of sanitation are killers in many African countries where waterborne diseases are a constant threat to health. Research says only 30% of Somalis have access to clean water, leaving the majority vulnerable to several life-threatening diseases. The launching of Hargeisa Water Quality Control Laboratory, which is a regional bacteriological water testing and chemical analysis laboratory, no doubt makes a huge difference. <laughs> The general manager of Hargeisa Water Agency, Mohamed Ali Darot, in the launching event, established that the mandate of the agency is to supply clean pipe bone water to the people of Hargeisa, adding that the introduction of the country's leading water quality control laboratory will spur the proper monitoring of the quality of water supply to the entire Hargeisa. We have to work hard on how to make a long-term policy and create what's called subservice dams because the dams that the people of Hargeisa drink now would not last. Then we have to capture the waters in the valleys. Yes, we are planning on how to do that right now. The second plan going on is to build a large hydro project which the agency is highly concerned about in Hargeisa, which we believe will take off the burden of the entire city of Hargeisa. This is the plan we are currently pursuing. He said the water testing laboratory was launched to tackle the increased waterborne diseases in the country. The vice president of Somaliland, Abdurrahman Seleri, has showed the need for the establishment of the laboratory, adding that it will save not only the many lives of the Hargeisa, but the entire nation at large. The uh, ceremony for operating the lab laboratory, test for water, 
it, it will reduce the epidemic diseases when it's clear, the water is cleaned and uh, tested. So I'm very happy to attend the launching of this laboratory test. All the government officials highlighted the importance of this laboratory <laughs> for the country. The, the significance is better water, uh, better health, and it's uh, good for the community because this is prevention of all the waterborne diseases is going to be addressed and also of course how many of our people die of waterborne diseases. Water has been scientifically proved to be a universal solvent. Its use and significance in our life cannot be overemphasized. But if water is dirty, waterborne disease can be as dangerous as anything. This is Hargeisa Water Quality Control and here is the manager of this laboratory. Uh, actually, this laboratory will be uh, beneficial to the uh, people in Hargeisa because we will be testing uh, the quality of water used in Hargeisa city. Uh, this laboratory is actually very standard and it will be able to test the different uh, quality parameters of drinking water. In Hargeisa Water Quality Laboratory, we determine the total hardness to know exactly how hard uh, that water is. Uh, we're also testing uh, toxic and heavy metals in this laboratory. We are testing uh, cadmium, we are testing copper, we are testing arsenic. Uh, these metals are really very toxic if they are above uh, the standard. And somebody uses for a long period of time, uh, it uh, actually causes uh, very serious health problems. So we are testing here uh, uh, in Hargeisa uh, Water Quality Control Laboratory periodically, like every three months and every, uh, every half a year. For the, for the microbiological tests, we test it routinely, daily. These uh, parameters should be tested daily because they change over time. They change, uh, every day they change. So we normally test microbiological tests daily. Also the physical uh, parameters, we test them uh, also daily. The laboratory manager Shuaib Ahmed affirmed that every water treatment plant has different standards and tests that they run. But by having your water tested by yourself, you will know that a comprehensive analysis has been done on your water's quality. He appreciated the support from within and outside the country. The Hargeisa Water Agency, which has been functioning for the past 40 years, has succeeded in introducing such a water testing laboratory for the first time in its history. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy that small report. That is what is going to lead me to the next question now. This agency recently launched uh, a, a, a very big and well-equipped water laboratory uh, in Argeisa. I want you to tell us of what rationale uh, is this project and what are the its advantage uh, to the good people of uh, Argeisa. Thank you, Balugun, and uh, we uh, we're actually pleased that uh, you witnessed, you know, the event that we have had for the launch of uh, the Hargeza Water Quality Control Laboratory, which was uh, something quite uh, very important for the water agency and also for the public for Gaza. The rationale behind the establishment of this laboratory basically was, you know, um, we're expected to supply as a government institution uh, water to the city of Argeza, but also we have to also be uh, in a place where we know exactly what kind of water is being supplied to the people of Argeza by the water agency itself and also by private water sellers or private water vendors or private water tankers as uh, people refer to them. And to establish that basis where we are supplying or where the people of Argeza are cutting water that are fit for human consumption, as it's rightly said, uh, we established this uh, water quality control laboratory. And the idea is not only to check the quality of the water being supplied by Argeza Water Agency, but all water sources, whether they are bottled water, water supplied by private water tankers, or other water sellers, of course. So the idea is that uh, by having this laboratory in place, we'll uh, be in a position where we reduce you know, waterborne diseases will be in a position where we raise, you know, the understanding of the public that they need to have that peace of mind where they know what kind of water that their loved ones are drinking at the end of the day. And also on that basis also we have to do more awareness. We have to, you know, tell the people or explain to the people, you know, the importance behind this. Of course, we have a mandate to supply water to you. 
If we are supplying it to you now, then good. If we are not supplying to you a water to you now, uh, then it doesn't mean that we don't check the quality of the water that you are drinking. It's important because, of course, you can wait for the water agency to complete this job, but you cannot wait to drink uh, you know, yes. water that are not clean because it's about your health. And it's very important that you work uh, closely with the water quality control laboratory. It's important that you request sometimes you know, for your water to be checked by the laboratory and if we see that the water are not clean then we will recommend of course the laboratory has the means to treat this water as well yeah absolutely that's that's very good absolutely. that's fantastic if the laboratory can treat water yeah. which means uh, anything we take in as water we will be very rest assured that is yeah, good sure. and clean absolutely. that is a very welcome development and that led me to this very crucial question you talk about them but we just have to talk uh, you know uh, these people that sell water either water fender water seller those that sell water mm -hmm. in, in truck absolutely. i think that uh are the people many people you know have access to now I, I want to ask is there any program that this agency is trying to you know put in place so that these people can be incorporated under this lab i mean the water they are selling to us is there any way you are trying to put them together so that that water will be checked as we speak we have a you know a very close partnership with uh, Bryford water tankers the water agents was part of the initiative that established uh, the Water Tankers Association. And in order to make sure that we support the part of Argeza where, where, where we don't supply water to, we have established this Water Tankers Association where what the water agents alongside the Hargeza municipality are subsidizing you know, the heritage of all those water tankers. We are paying around 25% of the heritage of you know, all these water tankers that are supplying water to Argeza, uh, it's about uh, the members of the Water Tankers Association are, are around 300 water tankers. So each one of them is uh, getting around 25% of their tax from the water agency uh, revenues. The reason we're doing that is also to have a means where we can influence their pricing as well. But also we'll, this will establish the basis where we start that's, that close collaboration between the laboratory and the water tankers. Another important uh, area where we are also looking at is to also study the water sources. You see, these water tankers are getting water from, of course, from the northern parts of Fergesa, from the western parts of Fergesa, from uh, what do you call the eastern parts of Fergesa, southern parts of Fergesa. So the team of the laboratory will just go and see the water source, and then we will be in a position that the laboratory certifies, for example, and then certifies all these good boreholes that are, and then the ones that are not uh, up to the level where they are, you know, fit for human consumption, then we can say you don't take this water, you just, absolutely. Hmm, that's a very good one. Yeah. I think if we can, you know, tackle it from the source, yeah. we all believe that what they are bringing to town is good, absolutely. which is, uh, you know, very good. And um, another area will be the, those who are companies which are, you know, producing, uh, what do you call them, uh, pottery water or mineral water. Or, or, uh, and I think also it's another area where, of course, you have a label on, you know, on the bottle of the water. It says they have this kind of components, you know. Uh, in, in the water and also the laboratory also is checking whether what's written on the bottle, the label there and what's inside the water matches. If it doesn't match then we speak to individual companies uh, just to address this issue but, but also the, where we can support them you know uh, uh, technical as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. That, 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 you know, it's very good and it's a welcome development. Now I, I would like us to talk about uh, a very critical issue now because based on my own observation, some part of Argesa, they are enjoying clean and good water supplied from government. Why some are not? I want you to, you know, do a kind of explanation and what, what should be the hope of those people who have not enjoyed this government water. Great, thank you, Belugun. It's a very good question. I think it's a question that is in the minds of many people in Argesa. But also it's a question that a lot of people raise, you know, and of course, and they have every right to raise as a government institution 
we have to supply water to all people in Hargeisa, not only parts of Hargeisa. Of course, that's uh, how it's supposed to be. But as I said earlier, you know, the current water supply system or the current water infrastructure was established in the early 70s. At the time, it was designed for the whole city of Hargeisa. At the time, it was not foreseen that one day we will be in a position that we need to ration you know, this water, to distribute this water to, to, to different parties of, of the city. At the time, it was not seen, you know, an inter in intermittent supply of water. It was just continuous supply because the people were like much smaller in numbers than what they are today. And because the system was not, dis you know, designed for a system where where we foresee that the need for water in Hargeisa, you know, the number of population is, is bigger than the you know, water resources that are available within the city. So it was not foreseen, you know, for the, in this kind of a scenario. And for that reason, we are only supplying part, to, you know, the current water supply to parts of Hargeisa, to the, you know, these parts are the old city of Hargeisa. Great. But with the new infrastructure that's under construction, with the support of our partners, our development partners, including the European Union, the German government, uh, especially, you know, uh, with its German Development Bank, KFW, the Somaliland Development Fund, which is also a very close partner of the Water Agency, we're doing something about that. In the future, when the system is completed, whatever amount of water that's supplied to Hargeisa will be managed in a way that's fairer, that's more equitable, because the system is designed for such a purpose. The current water supply system is not designed for that purpose. It was designed certain parts of Hargeisa in the past. But this system is designed in a way where we are considering Hargeisa as it is today. Hargeisa with all the infrastructure, with all the construction development that's ongoing within the city as it is today. Of course, Hargeisa is a very big city. It has a huge population and we cannot provide, you know, water, 100% coverage at one time. But we can do in percentages, in different, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, phases, of course. So, but we will have, you know, that, that, that possibility where we supply water equitably, because now we have four reservoirs, you see. One is in Ibrahim Kotbo district, other Chinese reservoir, next to the Chinese reservoir, the old Chinese reservoir. And we'll have another reservoir in uh, Ahmed Al district, in Mohammed Haber district, in Ghalim district. In the past, all water were coming to the Chinese reservoir, and then they were going through the pipe. And the pipe, you had connections, from, starting from the Chinese reservoir, all the way to the end of the pipe, you had connections. So by the time it comes to the downtown, you see the downtown, with all the you know, big buildings and the massive population there. All water were being sucked out, sucked out of the pipe almost. So you see, the downtown is like you know absolutely, and then you are going up to the Tahmadala or to Hamud Highway or to other parts of the city, and then by the time the water comes to the downtown, it lost its pressure. It almost loses all of its pressure. But now with the new system, you have the Chinese reservoir. Water comes to the Chinese reservoir from Gedebla first. Then when you are taking water to Tahmadala, it goes to, with a inner pipe that doesn't have any connection at all. So nobody can suck out any water from the pipe. It goes directly to the reservoir in Ahmed Dagah, and then it's distributed to the district of Ahmed Dagah. Then you have the, another pipe going from the Chinese reservoir, or from all uh, the Chinese to uh, Mahmoud Haibe reservoir. And, in that, uh, and, in, and between the two reservoirs, there are no connections. The pipe goes automatically from, directly from there, from the Chinese reservoir, to Mahmoud Haibe reservoir. So when it goes to that reservoir, then distribution happens there. And so it goes for Ghanlibah. So the new system is designed while you know taking into consideration of the current limitation of the of the current water supply, of course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, if you are just joining us, you are still watching CBA TV, the Voice of East Africa, and my guest today is Mohammed Ali Darod. I will go on a short break now, but when we come back, we'll be talking about the expansion project of this agency. We'll be right back. Hello out there. 
Tune in to CBA TV, the voice of East Africa and beyond. Uh, there are so many people around the world who are watching along with you. Welcome back. You are still watching CBA TV, the voice of East Africa and beyond. I still remain your host, Balugu Arishe Kolazis. Um, let's get back to the business, as we are saying before. Uh, we understand all what you have rightly discussed with us, and now, in every project of this nature, there is room for expansion, although you have been talking about it. But I want to know, what are the plans, like your expansion plans on this project, maybe in the next five years or thereabouts? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, first expansion, of course, we have talked about, which is the water expansion project, where we expect to increase the coverage of water supply within the city of Fergesa, as I said. And this is to, to be cautious, we cannot supply water to, you know, to all parts of Fergesa at one go. That is, you know, nearly impossible. But what we can do is to increase the coverage, you know, in different phases, of course. Uh, that's this expansion project is of course with uh, it's ongoing now. Some of some parts completed, some are under construction at the moment. But also we have another expansion. Uh, you know, project is uh, financed by the water agency, and of course, uh, which includes of course things like the establishment of the Hargeza Water Quality Control Laboratory that was recently launched a few days back. We also have uh, an expansion of, of the water agency offices in the different parts of Hargeza. Where at the moment we are working our main compound in uh, Brehan Kotbo district under construction, very big. We are also at Flobin, um, uh, you know, HWA, Hargeza Water Agency Department of Construction. Because you see, one challenge we have uh, at the moment is that, uh, uh, you know, in the in, you know, international uh, donations or the grants or international assistance, development assistance, is being squeezed year after year. You know, uh, the amount that uh, rich governments are contributing to in international development assistance is just going down percentage-wise. So we will not be in a position always to get the support for Hargeza Water Projects. And on that, uh, in, that, in, that, in that scenario, Hargeza Water Agency is developing its own uh, you know, department of construction where we foresee to work you know, on the sustainability of the current water supply system by increasing, you know, the amount of recharge that's going down into the aquifer from, you know, the seasonal, uh, you know, rains. We do that by constructing, you know, what do you call subsurface dams and other mechanisms where we make sure we have uh, more water as a recharge going into the current aquifer. And we are doing that uh, by, 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 you know, um, purchasing as much heavy machinery as possible. So we have now almost a big portion of this as well, to, uh, because otherwise if we just rent, it's very expensive, we can't do that. Great, and we have our own engineers, of course. Another area where we're looking at, after we do this uh, work, where we increase the recharge of the aquifer, of the current aquifer that's supplying water to our geyser, we are also planning to uh, construct what you call small scale dams around the city of our geyser with our own construction department. We are doing that to make sure that we reduce the pressure on, the, on, the, on Hargeza's main water supply. So things like private water tankers or water for construction or for other uses can be you know, uh, fetched from, from, from these small scale dams. We are also looking at things like establishing our own mechanical workshop, commercial mechanical workshop, where we foresee that the water agents, of course, it's a commercial, uh, you know, uh, mechanical workshop, in you know, get some revenue from that, but also has another very important, you know, um, target, which is to increase, you know, uh, the skills, you know, uh, the vocational skills of, of the people of Gaza. When they come, they train there, then they move to other parts of the country with the skills they have learned, things like plumbing and other, you know, uh, important uh, skills, of course, yeah. That's a very good one, and I believe by the grace of God, all uh, will be fine. Yeah. On a very last note, you know, you've talked a lot, but I believe uh, the Somalilanders will still be looking out to listen to what is going to be like your last message for them, like the hopeful message, the hope raising message for them as the general manager of Ar Argesa Water Agency. My last message to the people of Argesa is that now we are working. Uh, our construction teams, 
or the companies, uh, of course, we have foreign companies who are doing the construction work of, of this project, Hargeza Water Supply and Basic, san basic Sanitation, uh, supported by the German government. Within the city, of, we have two German companies. One is uh, the contractor and one is the consultant, the engineer who's checking the work, of course. They have uh, a number of teams within the city of Hargeza. And my message to the public of Hargeza is that we need to work uh, to support these uh, teams who are doing the pipeline, who are doing construction work of kiosks, of reservoirs, because they are working for us. This is uh, for the city of Gaza, for the benefit of the city of Gaza. And uh, with, with your support, of course, we can successfully complete this job, which is uh, the current water distribution system, which we are doing at the moment. That's my message to the public. But also another mes important message is that, of course, we have issues with the land always. You know, people, you know, people doing, you know, their construction on pipes, you know, so that's also, I think, something we have to, uh, as the water agents and other government institutions like Hargeza Municipality, we need to just educate people more, but also have systems that we protect, you know, pipes, because in a major city like Hargeza, you cannot have a situation where people are just, you know, doing construction or houses on major water supply pipes. It's risky to do that. It hinders, you know, the water supply system, and it's not good for the city. Um, the good people of Argesa, as you can hear from the, uh, the general manager, that with your support, all these things will be very, very easy at the end of the day. We want you to, you know, collaborate with us, support our staff. Fundalization of government property is absolutely wrong. We employ you to protect everything we, you have in your area uh, we are just working to make things easy for you this is where we will draw the curtain of this program i thank you for viewing thank you for coming we meet next time same station bye for now